Hello and welcome everyone to the Formula Racing League's GT3 nightclub powered by ACC strategists. We're getting down to the real deal now with just two rounds to go in this seven race series. Tonight on the back of a brilliant round at Silverstone last week, the penultimate race of this season takes us to Spain in the beautiful region of Valencia to the Circuit de Valencia, also known as Circuit Ricardo Tormo. In the comms box, bringing you all the action. On, on behalf of 00 Raven Comms, it is myself, George Cook, and I'm joined, as usual, by my partner in crime here at the nightclub, Sean Madden. Good evening, Sean. Good evening, George. Thank you for having me in the commentary box at, uh, once again, and a warm welcome to all the race fans in chat and watching globally. Looking forward to a great bit of racing tonight, as always, George. Five rounds done and dusted. Two remain in this season, Valencia today, and then we are off to the legendary Nürburgring for the season finale next week. Make sure you have your notifications on so you don't miss a moment of the action. Of course, the podium sitters of the GT3 nightclub each get their hands on a license key for the ACC Strategist app. It's a brilliant tool to enhance your racing. As always, we have our two 20-minute races and six minutes of qualifying to set the grid and that grid will be set for both races, but it's night time. So let's go over to Sean again for our weather report and a bit of info about tonight's races. Okay, yes, Jules. So the uh, weather report, uh, well, I have to say it's been a very beautiful day here in Valencia, Spain, always treating us to the best of weather, that classic Mediterranean scenery as the sun sets and enjoying a nice cool pint of San Miguel. Always goes down the tree. Uh, but jokes aside, uh, things are starting to cool down a bit. Uh, race time will be at 10 p.m. Quite a few clouds are about, but still holding a very comfortable 20 degrees celsius but will drop as the races go on but more importantly there's no rain on the horizon at this stage which is excellent conditions for the drivers uh, for the race format today well same as every round no mandatory pit stops as drivers have got sufficient fuel and tires to last the entire 20 minute stint with no problems a short formation lap or a rolling start before the start of each race and don't forget tonight's very short qualifying sets the grid for both races drop rounds are being calculated on the fly as we are about to see spending too much time in the sun mate i'm jealous uh, nonetheless uh, <laughs> taking a look at the top 10 standings now after round five christian muller the german driver takes a drop last week uh, because his results were less than ideal on that night out on 501 points remains in the top spot but Leon Seeley from Barbados originally had the perfect weekend at Silverstone, except for not taking pole position in qualifying. So first place in both races, a real professional showing for him. Now on 468 points and closing in on that P1 position. Sandro Van Sand, the Belgian driver, now in third in the standings on 387 points. A noteworthy P2 finish in race two last week. Pavel Stenner, fourth in the standings, takes a drop round, a week to forget at Silverstone last time out. Fabio Giafrida moves up to fifth in the standings, only 314 points, uh, on 314 points, only three points behind Stenner. Domikos Kiss falls to sixth, 300 points for that driver. Martin Scott, the Dutch driver, on uh, moved up to seventh in the standings, dropped the last round with a DNS, sadly, but eight penalty points. And unfortunately, that may be getting very close to a disqualification. Got to watch out for that. Wasim Mogal, who was involved in quite the action last week at Silverstone, moves up from 10th to 8th in the standings now, 232 points. Max Florens in 9th, disqualified from the series, but still somehow in the top 10. We'll keep an eye on that. And rounding things out, it's Melt Pauly uh, falls to 10th in the standings on 213 points and also, unfortunately, uh, disqualified from the series, sadly. Too many penalty points for some of those chaps around the grid. So now let's talk about the wonderful circuit that is Circuit Ricardo Tormo. We've got a track length of about 2.4 miles at four kilometers, founded in 1999 and unchanged since 14 quarters, five to the right, nine to the left, 61 feet or for those of us in a sensible metric system, 18.5 uh, meters of elevation around the track. 
It's truly beautiful. It's a flowing circuit is Ricardo Dormo. Almost no time spent in a straight line bar the main straight. Every corner leading to, into the next with some incredibly tricking braking zones and a notable sausage curb for the drivers to navigate. Turn one and turn two being the danger areas for track limits. But uh, even a 20 minute race, that's something to watch out for. We've got some fastest lap information for people as well. Uh, one minute 32.129 is the real world fastest lap here set by Luca Enskler in the Audi R8 LMS GT3 Evo 2. Quite the mouthful is that car. That was set in 2023 at the Valencia GT Winter Series round. The fastest ever race lap here was a 121.244 by Andreas Zuba in the Dallara GP205 Series in 2006. A series that participants included the likes of Nelson Angelo Piquet and Lewis Hamilton. Uh, but Nelson Angelo PK actually took the qualifying fastest lap in the world, 1 minute 17.8. Tons of racing still goes on here, of course, primarily a MotoGP track. So the Grand Prix Motorcycle uh, Championship still come here to this day. We've got the GT World Challenge Europe here as well, going since 2021. Previously, Formula E was here for the Valencia E Prix in 2021, never to return, sadly. DTM, World, Bike, uh, World SBK and the Le Mans Series in 2007 as well, the GT World Challenge Europe going there soon, 16th and 17th of September for round eight of the Fanatec GT Sprint Cup. That is right, George. Uh, this track is named after the Spanish two-time world champion Grand Prix motorcycle racer Ricardo Tormo, who sadly passed away in 1998. And the capacity for this circuit is around 165,000 spectators with some great views for those sitting in the grandstands. All but one of the corners here at Valencia are named after famous MotoGP races, which is Turn 14, named after Campos Racing founder Adrian Campos. Also, did you know that this track has been recreate, recreated in the video games, such as T uh, Tourist Trophy and Gran Turismo PSP? Also, other names are Alfa Romeo Racing Italiano, GTR Evolution, and R Factor as well. Uh, the track has appeared in every MotoGP game since it made its debut in 1999 and will be making, I believe, its 25th anniversary once MotoGP 24 is released. But at the moment, the latest recreation of the track, however, is of course in this game, Assetto Corsa Competizione, as we will see the drivers race around very shortly. But I wonder, who will take the spells spoils this evening, George? As do I, and I do recall very fondly the Gran Turismo PSP, although I have to admit, I don't think I ever played the Valencia track on Gran Turismo PSP, so not one that I've actually gone and bothered to experience, sadly, but I'm glad that this track has made its way uh, into a lot of familiar racing games. No doubt, of course, that it's in the MotoGP circuit. So. We do have uh, six minutes of qualifying coming right up. We're going to head on to track. We're just waiting for the qualifying session to begin. But folks, it is time for the FRL GT3 nightclub. Right, so on track uh, we go. 8.51 p.m. out on circuit optimum track conditions, of course. 21 degrees. The temperature has gone up just ever so slightly despite what was cloud cover, Sean, but now it's looking a little bit sunnier out there. Not, not that we're going to get any sun, but uh, certainly no no shortage of uh, heat out on the track for these competitors. Yeah, I mean, if they weren't driving, then, uh, yeah, that San Miguel would come in handy, wouldn't it? But... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, well, you know, we've got, to be, we've got to be careful on condoning the drinking and driving, but, yeah, you're absolutely right, because a nice cold beverage <laughs> at this time would be great. Of course, for all those in the grandstand watching around in chat as well, uh, feel free to crack one open, because uh, I do, do like that old San Miguel. It's quite nice, isn't it? Ah, it's beautiful. And it's cheap as well, George, more importantly. Oh. And cheap and cheerful is always good for me. <laughs> That's right. I got, you've got to love it. You've got to love it at the end of the day. Yes, so, uh, of course, a big thank you to the FRL organisers, uh, the prizes that are on uh, hand for the victors. We are barrelling towards the end of the season, so we are looking very much forward to see who will take the season honours, but of course all the top three will get that ACC strategist key that we mentioned before. So a big, big thank you to the FRL organisers for this amazing series. We've had a lot of fun here, haven't we, Sean? 
Oh, absolutely fantastic. And and to be honest, George, uh, this obviously being the penultimate round of the uh, series, uh, there is still a championship to be won. Uh, you know, for, you know, actually two drivers, isn't it, uh, from Sealy uh, and. I forgot the other name. <laughs> uh, Muller, Muller and Seely. Muller, going there we go. It. Muller, yes. yeah. It, it was on the tip of my tongue, but yeah, between them two drivers, uh, Seely actually got two P1s in the last round, so uh, he uh, closed the gap to about 32 points, I believe. So if he can finish in front of uh, Muller again, then that gap will uh, come dwindling down uh, before the last race, which is at Nurburgring, isn't it, George? It sure is. And of course, make sure you join us in a week for that. Welcome in everyone to chat. We've got our lovely Formula Racing League TV admin. We've got Rock, uh, Rocky Marge there as well. Welcome in to chat. And of course, if anyone has any questions during the broadcast, do let us know. We're always happy to engage with those who are enjoying that Samuel Bell in the grandstand. Four minutes 30 to remain in this qualifying. Everyone is now out on track and beginning their outlaps. So we will see some time set in a couple of minutes. Now from recall, we had uh, Mr. Firth there, I think was the one who was taking pole at Silverstone with a mega, mega lap, beat out Sealy and a number of other very, very fast drivers. I'm going to be keeping my eye on today on Sandro Van Sand, who's had a brilliant uh, debut in the VCO Sprint to the Grand Finals earlier on Wednesday for the Thomas Eng team. Uh, so he's just been announced. I saw on their Twitter as well, a nice little announcement board for Sandro Van Sand, now joining officially being part of that team. And a good little debut as well. It was a tricky little fight back that they had to do. So uh, did very, very well in that race. But currently looking at the car that is Leon Seeley, this Lamborghini here. It's got all the work to do today because Christian Muller is still fairly well ahead in the points as it stands right now. But it's all, you know, it could all come closing up very, very quickly at the end of this race. Really depends on what we see out on track. We've got about 23 there. Christian Muller included, Seeley included, Sandra Van Sands in there as well, including all of our usual regulars. So going to be looking forward to this one very much. Uh, yes, certainly. And um, it, it, uh, you mentioned about Van Sand. He actually got P2 in the second race of the last round. So certainly uh, a man that could be on form and, uh, um, you know, definitely one to look out for. But certainly between Seeley and Muller, um, yeah, this is going to be an absolute cracking race. And, uh, yeah, Seeley is going to have to pull out all the stops to finish in front of Muller if he's got any chance for the last round, of course. That's right. So Muller has gone round. We've got a first timing sheet on the board now from the hot laps. Two and a half minutes to go. And it's a one minute 31.072 from Muller. Takes him all the way to P1 as it stands right now. Eight tenths the gap. Back to Alan Brown in that lovely BMW that he's getting very, very familiar with. He does love that car. We've had a quick chat to him before. Seeley just taking the P2 position now by three tenths of a second to Muller. So that is a good result there from Seeley. But I'm expecting these times to drop, Sean. In the sprint series, we did see a couple of one minute 29s, which was incredibly quick. And uh, in other series, we've seen the average time be somewhere around the mid one minute 30s. So that's the eye. That's the times to keep an eye on as it stands right now. Everyone is improving out on track. Seeley going faster. Muller going faster as well. They're all finding time. So expect these times to be dropping quite rapidly and quite significantly. Uh, yes, indeed. As we just see uh, Seeley come across the line, he is now three times down on Muller. Uh, but yeah, of course, the drivers will find it very difficult to find track space. It's quite a short lap and quite a lot of corners as well. Uh, so it is very important to uh, kind of keep the space and not affect each other's uh, uh, lap, of course, as we've only got, uh, well, six minutes of qualifying, isn't it, uh, George? We've uh, just over one minute left, so there will be one more lap for most of the drivers, of course. That's right. And keeping an eye now on Seeley, who's gone and found a bunch of time up by three quarters of a second at the moment and coming into the last couple of corners at Ricardo Tormo. We'll see what he's got in the hand. He's got the number seven Porsche ahead of him, which is slightly compromising him, unfortunately, but he manages to quite nicely navigate that. Lost a little bit of time, but this should be well good enough for P1. And Seeley goes to pole position with a 1 minute 30.717. Now it's on to Christian Muller. Can he find some time out there? At the moment, he's green, as you can all see on your screen. So he's finding time, but it's going to need 
at least three and a half tenths of a second to get there into pole position and take that away from Sealy. Uh, indeed, yes, uh, it's all or nothing on this lap, of course. Uh, but yes, uh, Sealy in that prime position uh, uh, to, to hold off Muller for s certain. Although Van Sand has moved on to pole position, George, with a 1 minute 30.5. Oh, that is a beautiful lap time from the 93 car and a beautiful live race. She's one of my favorites on the grid. That is a brilliant time. And what I was saying is that we should be seeing somewhere in the mid 130s. And there we go. Uh, the maximum wait time has a lap uh, is started now. So qualifying has technically elapsed at this stage of the race. And let's see. Will Christian Mully is about to come across the line now. He's actually found five tenths of a second. He's going to find a little bit more. Maybe that's not going to be good enough for P1. Oh. Can't get ahead of Van Sand, but takes P2 away from Seeley, who's returned to the pits. So at the moment, your top three, Van Sand from Muller, from Seeley. Great stuff there. Firth is also finding just a little bit of time in the last part of this uh, race here. Of course, he got pole position at Silverstone in the Ferrari but not going to be quite good enough for pole position here. It does not look like. So that is a good result there from Sandro Van Sand. He will be absolutely stoked and has actually snuck out for another lap. So has the opportunity to improve, but only 48 hundredths of a second short between P1 and P2. That is close. That is extremely close. And I did say about Van Sand, didn't I? I said he was the man on form, you know, getting that P2 uh, from the last race of the last round. Uh, but I, I suppose for the championship's perspective, it's just so important that Muller actually finished in front of Sealy. Obviously not good news for Sealy, though. Uh, Van Sand doesn't improve, does he, on his uh, time? But he didn't need to, did he? Uh, he will qualify on pole position then, of, of course, George. That is absolutely spot on. No one else really around the grid improving too much. We've got Bergio here who did improve just a little bit. Let's see if that's an improvement. No, stays P20 is one of the last cars out on track. So we will be rapidly going towards the next session here, folks, as the car will, cars will line up. And, oh, Sean, there's someone that you know in chat. I'll leave that to you. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, uh, Gemma. I hope you're doing well. Thanks so much for uh, joining us uh, tonight. And uh, um, unfortunately, George, I will have to say that uh, I'm having uh, some technical issues here because I can't get into the server. Uh, my pit wall's not working. <laughs> so I'm having an absolute nightmare. So uh, I'm trying to sort of work around you at the moment, George. But uh, for now, I can't get into the servers at all. So I'm literally relying on your screen. <laughs> that's right yeah but uh, these things do happen and uh, i'm sure you will do a fantastic job in lieu of having a direct connection to the server uh, hopefully the pitbull live is up as well if it is do let me know sean if it's not then uh, we'll, we'll try and figure something out but nonetheless uh you'll be able to help me call the action on track regardless we're just going through the grid walk right now looking around the grid at all these beautiful libraries welcoming gazoo racing as well to chat we've got a 20 minute race ahead of us folks and another one starting immediately after Afterwards, the qualifying grid will stay the same for both races. And it is, of course, as Sean mentioned earlier, a short formation lap slash short rolling start. We're both a little bit at odds as to what it's really called. And actually, it does look like it's called a short rolling start. So I think you're probably right on that one, Sean. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'll only refer to uh, the game that we don't speak about, uh, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yes, yes, that 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 game that I I tend to like um, is called a rolling start, and that's generally on the the last two corners, which I believe would be on Valent. Well, it's not even the last two corners; it's the final corner, isn't it? As they line up there, so. Uh, I would like to call it rolling start, but uh, if you want to call it short formation lap, then uh, so be it. But uh, George, lead us away, please. 100%, mate. Well, they're interchangeable terms at the end of the day. That's how it all works. It means the same thing to us, and that means we're not doing a full lap out here on track to get ourselves prepared for the rolling start procedure. And in fact, we will be starting just at the end of turn uh, well, just at the beginning of turn 14. We've got a pit lane starter as well. The 98 car has not clicked the drive button. That's not going to be particularly handy, but leading us away for the rolling start procedure will be Van Sand from Muller, from Seeley, from Gibbons, from Firth, from Mark GG, from Alan Brown, from Jeff Reader, from Marge, from Silver, 
And this is going to be quite the start here because turn one can be quite the ferocious corner to start. And let's hope everyone gets through the first couple of corners nice and cleanly. But we are back for the GD3 nightclub. We're green on circuit. We're away. And Muller has got a great start there on the outside line. Put his foot down at the perfect time. And Van Sam will have to pedal for the inside line. Holds it nicely, but Muller's going to get a nice little overlap and takes pole position uh, for the moment. Uh, Van Stan now under a bit of pressure from Seeley behind, but a decent start overall for all of them. It was a mix-up of the grid happening down in 10th and 9th place at the moment, but a great start for the top three as it stands as they go through turn three, turn four, turn five, a tricky little quarter to get right. But Christian Muller has had the dream start there. This is going to really help him out because Seeley is now a position behind him, behind Van Sand with Firth right on the back of that Lamborghini. Mark GG in tow in the 989 McLaren, followed by Gibbons in Ferrari 138 car, the Alan Brown in the BMW, the Alan Brown, <laughs> the BMW of the 738 car there. Maz in P8, P9, Silver, and Keese has managed to get up a couple of positions there very nicely and is helping his championship attempt. So this has been a great little start, very clean. Uh, yes, indeed, George, and uh, it was a very important move for Muller to make on Van Sand. Of course, uh, Valencia, a very difficult circuit to pass on. It's only really uh, if you get a good exit out of this final corner uh, using the slipstream uh, and entering turn one is kind of the areas where the, uh, the drivers will uh, look to make a pass. Other than that, you've got to stay behind the driver. So uh, Muller in a, a fantastic position to get a race one here, of course, George. That that is absolutely right. Silva's just made a beautiful move on Domokos Kies there. It's a very nice little move into turn 14, which of course does open up very, very nicely. So it's a great opportunity to overtake. You don't want to be doing it in turn one. Very dangerous place to overtake. And there's three track limit warnings that you can get before you will get a drive through. Of course, you don't want the drive through, but occasionally tactically using those track limits uh, can be fairly useful. So we may see a few of the cars just run a little bit wide and uh, use that speed token as it's familiarly known. That's Giafrida now, making a great move on Domokos Kiss. A little bit of contact there through turn five, but they do get through cleanly. There's a great train of cars going on now here for fighting for that top 10 position. Uh, but the battle at the top continues to rage on. That is a car that has gone very, very slightly. That's Ian Thompson. He's spun, he's around, and the cars are going to be going past him. A reasonably nice little pirouette there to get himself back facing the right direction. Of course, you don't want to be facing the wrong way for too long on a circuit like this. No, certainly not. Certainly not. It's... Uh... I mean, it's, it's a tr very tricky circuit, of course, George. Uh, lots of uh, technical corners and uh, quite quite narrow as well and uh, not really anywhere to uh, park the car. Uh, certainly uh, uh, for a safe rejoin, um, yeah, he, he would have had to let all the cars through. But, uh, yeah, just seeing uh, on board with, was it CD now, is it, uh, um, George? Um, Muller, Muller. Very, Oh, sorry, Muller, Muller, uh, with uh, Van Sand very close to the back of him at the moment, with CD in a tow as well. So uh, it will only take one little mistake from either driver for, for there to be uh, uh, position changes uh, in, in this lap, of course. But, George, I'll let you uh, take it away. All good. So Sand there got a great run out of turn 14, Muller. Didn't have the most ideal exit, getting the car a little bit sideways as he put the power down and ran across that green strip, which does not have a lot of grip. The track temperature, by the way, has dropped from 21 degrees Celsius all the way to 19 degrees Celsius. So it is getting cooler and cooler out there. But these three at the moment, inseparable. No one looking for an opportunistic move at this stage. Van Zandt, that was very deep uh, on the brakes there, trying to get some time up on Muller. That's going to bring Seeley into the action. They're going to go side by side through turn 8, 9, 10. Sand has the inside line, though, so Seeley will have to back out. Maybe try a switcheroo there, but Sand plants it on the apex beautifully as they come into turn 12. And uh, then Sand will continue to maintain the second position spot there. That's given Muller just a little bit of breathing room out the top just to stay. OK, right, I can take a breather. I can get my head back down, nail this exit here and get a really, really good run uh, down the main straight. The McLarens here are very, very strong, so it's actually very refreshing as refreshing as a San Miguel, in fact, to see the Audi and the Lamborghini and the Ferrari up in the top four. So four manufacturers in the top four. Absolutely brilliant to see that happen.
Uh, indeed, yeah. Normally, um, you would you, you'd see like uh, the McLarens dominating, but uh, as you can see, uh, four different manufacturers and then Audi on top. But of course, we know Muller, a uh, very, very good a driver, and he's not on top of the championship uh, for no reason. So, uh, uh, yeah, fantastic to see. Uh, and um, you can see up and down the field, George, it is so close. Uh, between all the drivers. So, so good to see. That's right. We've got a big issue here between Mughal and what looks to be Biswas there. We're trying to get a camera angle on it. Looks like Biswas and Mughal have come together. Mughal's looking a little bit slow through turn four there, now under pressure from Stewart. So something there has happened between those drivers. We'll try and catch that on an action replay momentarily. Here we go for the replay. Let's see what happened between these two. They were going through... Uh, the turn one here, I wonder if Biswas has had an issue and McCall's just had no option uh, but to run into the back of him or something like that. We'll keep a little eye here. Biswas going into turn two on the replay. And yes, so McCall just dives in and Ooh. takes him out, takes two cars out. McCall once again involved in the action on track. Certainly not ideal there. He'll be picking up some damage as will Biswas and the other driver who was picked up in that. That is, uh, that was a bit deep, wasn't it, Sean? Uh, it was indeed, George, and uh, we thought we saw it all last week, didn't we, uh, with uh, uh, Miguel uh, getting involved with uh, many uh, collisions, but uh, it's uh, uh, a reared its uh, ugly head again, hasn't it, George? So, uh, yeah, unlucky for the drivers can easily happen um, around a circuit like this, but, uh, yeah, it's not good to see, of course. That's right. Fastest lap still with Celia, 1 minute 30.6. It's actually better, I believe, than his qualifying time. So clearly found a bit of frustration in the qualifying with six minutes only to do. And uh, now stuck in this train of cars at the top. We've got Michael Firth there in fourth position. He's just having a very quiet race here. Just chilling in a bit of a doldrum zone between the two battle packs going around. Mark GG has been in a little bit of a battle here as we do go on to the rear view mirror camera of Mark GG in his McLaren. He's being followed quite closely by Gibbons in the 138 Ferrari. That was very close as well. A little bit early on the brakes, maybe for Gigi, or a little bit late for Gibbons, but nearly a bit of contact there, and Gibbons does get out of it rightly so. It's exactly what we didn't see Mogal do in turn two. There are a lot of different philosophies actually uh, involved in racing here, Sean, and there's, you know, you can run very, very deep into the corners and break late into the apex, or you can break early and try and open up the exits. Usually the fastest way of doing it is to open up the exits and try and get a really, really good run, but with all the short exits, and the short straights after most of these corners, as I said before, it is uh, basically corner after corner after corner here with not a lot of respite on the straight. So, yeah, the philosophies here do come into conflict, uh, conflict occasionally, and that does seem to have been the case uh, between Biswas and Mokal. Mokal just outbraked himself, sadly. So, unfortunately, these things do happen now. The grid is pretty spread out now for the most part. Stand has actually fallen slightly, or momentarily fell slightly behind Muller. Muller's been setting some absolutely brilliant lap times um, at the top of the grid. Sand takes fastest lap though now, a 130.587, which is nearly equal to his qualifying time. So they're all out there setting quality laps, Sean. <laughs> I know, it's uh, absolutely uh, phenomenal. In, in regards to uh, what you were saying, my normal philosophy of taking the corner is, uh, you know, slowing fast out. Uh, but uh, yeah, with um, a lot of, um, because the corners at uh, Valencia, uh, it, it's almost like setting up um, for the second uh, um, corner in consequence, basically. So uh, it's about sort of taking the inside line and setting you up for what might be a left to a right hander, uh, as you'll see on board now. But uh, um, but yeah, just unfortunate with them drivers, of course, uh, George. But uh, but this is fantastic to see because we're seeing so many uh, fan fantastically close racing between the drivers. Uh, really can't call um, how these battles are going to unfold. Right, we're barreling towards halfway distance in this race. Silver's been having a good little battle with Brown. Brown uh, driving incredibly defensively as always. Silver there ran a little bit wide through turn 12 and had to compromise his line out. That is a car in the pits, Sean. Is that, that I believe, is the 98 car who didn't even start this race. No, it's the number seven car. Seven, okay, yeah. yeah, the seven car. So that is Jake Deschong there. He's been in the pits now for about three or four minutes, sadly. Mokal's got a drive through. Okay, so 
There's our first drive through on track. It is Mughal. He's used those speed tokens, those track limits too much, and he gets another one. That's another track limit warning right there for Mughal. So uh, he is absolutely sending that car way too hard at this point, trying to make the places back up and back on the board with the battle for the top three because Seeley, uh, Muller is now under a huge amount of pressure from Van Sand once again in this race. Uh, yes, indeed, indeed. Van Sand uh, is, is certainly a driver that doesn't ever give up. Uh, and, uh, uh, oh, we get side by side with, with, is that brown and silver, is it, George? It is, they're going at it. Yep, side by side. I think that is brown in the uh, Texaco livery there, isn't it? So I think brown. Oh, big news, uh, sorry to interrupt. seeley has gone round, seeley has gone round. Oh. Yep, he's had a major, major problem there, and Seeley has come off the track just after turn 12. I think he might have had a bit of a bad run through turn 12, hit the curb, and that has super compromised him. Oh, my goodness. That has got some big championship ramifications. He'll fall behind Silver and Brown, who are still fighting at it, and that takes him completely out of the challenge for the top three in the first race. He'll have another chance, but crikey, that is not what you want to be seeing. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, that is the huge ramifications. It's, oh, my God, we got Brown on the outside of uh, Silver. Oh, is that Seeley on the inside as well? It sure so is. So three, three-way battle for B6. Looks like Seeley has made... Uh, yeah, just just made it stick on uh, Brown, and uh, Brown's going to lose another position if he's not careful, uh, with Marge uh, just behind. Oh, and Marge has gone round. What's happened there? Oh, dear. So, Giafrida oh. and the Marge, that battle was going on. And Marge, I don't know if it was just a little bit of an over-eagerness there on the throttle or a little bit of contact from behind. But around goes Marge. He's been taken out of that battle for the top 10 spot. Yankovic, uh, Yankov, sorry, will move up, as will Woodward. And, um, well, no, sorry, they, apologies. They won't move up because they're in P12 and P13. But Keys uh, and Giafrida will quite gladly take that and Seeley's now on a bit of a charge here because he's got a lot of work to do he is ahead of Alan Brown and now chasing after Silver and by the way still on the top of the grid Christian Muller and Van Sand going at it a 130.532 now the fastest lap taken by Christian Muller Seeley is trying everything and runs very very wide oh. into turn 14 that's not the line my friend I think he might be carrying a bit of damage Sean I think he may well be uh, George you know obviously uh trying to um limit the uh you know damaged limitations uh, so to speak uh but uh, but yeah of course um you know the car is not going to be reacting the way that he wants it to be uh, and of course uh, very anxious uh, about the championship that you know of course you know he's going to be losing many points to muller you know he was uh, um had quite a deficit to muller in the first place um but yeah this is definitely not helping his calls and you can see just uh, a little bit weird on the exit as well as he tries to keep the car under control but he's really struggling there George he sure is the battle continues up the top of the grid Seeley now down in p7 but Sands has just kept on the back uh, rear bumper of Muller for a basically the entire race at this stage the start for Sand was not ideal Muller got straight past him Sand was on p1 so had the rights into the inside of the corner by the way Thompson has picked up a drive through as well and goes and clears that as has Mughal. So both of those two have come into the pits and sorted out that drive through, making sure they don't pick up a extra penalty for their troubles. Six and a half minutes remaining in the race at the moment, 18 degrees now on track. It's continuing to cool, uh, which is, uh, yeah, I'd say it's pretty good for a lot of the drivers. It means the tires can stay nice and cool, uh, which is good. And now on board with the three-way battle between Woodward, Yankov and Marge. This is looking a bit spicy. Oh, yeah, I think he just held off for the time being, but uh, that is uh, Marge who was uh, uh, challenging Yankov there, but Yankov is uh, able to hold off of him. But of course, then he's going to be losing the gap to Woodward that is in a P11. So, uh, so yeah, this could go either way uh, between the three drivers here uh, for sure, George. That's right. And I want to make a quick apology to everyone in the chat. I did leave the grid walk um, graphic up on the live broadcast for just a little bit too long there so my apologies for that we'll make sure that is sorted out for future but nonetheless this battle is starting to spice up Giafrida and oh goodness 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 we've got sand he's made it past Muller oh dear so just as we were focusing on that 
just as I thought these two were going to stay the way it was. Van Sand decides, nope, I've had enough time behind Muller's Audi. I'm sick of uh, uh, smelling the smoke coming out of the back of that car. Uh, the, of course, the, the, it's not a dangerous smoke, just, just a normal, regular petroleum sort of smell. Uh, but Van Sand will move up into P1 position there. So Sand takes it away from Muller as was done in the reverse at the beginning of this race, and Sand will be absolutely stoked with that performance. We've got another yellow flag out on track, the 999 car. We'll try and pick that up as well, but that was a brilliant, brilliant little overtake into turn eight for Van Sand. Now it's all to play for for Muller. Muller's got a little bit of work to do. Got a hold onto the back of Van Sand, uh, who is in that very, very fast um, McLaren with a whole bunch of preparation this week in two series. So Van Sand will be likely running away with this unless Muller can do something to hold onto the back. Now dealing with a little bit of dirty air though as well. Uh, yes, indeed. Yeah, no, uh, Van Sand was uh, very patient in uh, trying to make the move on uh, Muller there. Uh, and uh, once the opportunity did arise for him, uh, took it with both hands and uh, you've got to commend Van Sand uh, for, um, for doing so. Um, there is also a battle now you're looking at now. So is Seeley on silver and Seeley, uh, well, he's, uh, we said it was a damage limitation mission for him. Uh, that will definitely um, help him out uh, getting a P6 with Muller being in P2. So, of course, Muller will gain quite a few points, but uh, it won't be as bad. So uh, can uh, Seeley make the move on silver, who is a, a very... Um, a very good competitor in himself. It's going to be a, a tough ask, but if anyone can, see you can, George. That's right. That's a good little rhyme as well, actually. Uh, just looking down the grid as well, <laughs> we've had uh, Yankov move up ahead of Woodward. Marge is still in tow of Woodward. Uh, we will be able to catch that on camera momentarily. There we go. So the Porsche drivers, uh, the Porsche of Yankov getting up ahead of the Porsche of Woodward. Not teammates, of course. They're not driving for the team. And driving for themselves, but uh, Woodward here has been involved in the FR racing team, and that's a bit of a slide there Ooh. through turn 12, just gives it a little bit too much input. Through goes Marge in the 213 car, and that will be a position lost for Woodward. That's two positions lost this lap. What a shame that is for the FRL driver, just as we go on board. Crikey. Um, well, I, you know, I have to admit, these complicated curses, uh, while I do feel like I've disproved it, seem to be coming and biting us in the bum, unfortunately. Uh, looking down the grid just a little bit here, we've got a little bit of battle here. Chris Jones in that pink pig Porsche, leading us away from uh, Garoul, uh, who I believe is a new competitor on the grid here for the nightclub. I haven't seen him in here before. Uh, this was who got involved in that early contact, and that's the BMW of Garoul going in on it on Bergio. That's a great little move into Ooh. turn two. That was a fantastically timed move from uh, Garil there and uh, it, will he yeah, might just be able to hold off that position uh, he went a little bit narrow and actually that is Biswas up the inside of of uh, of uh, who is that uh, that's uh, Bergio that's Bergio <laughs> oh there's oh, contact right. between the two Bergio forces his way through um, and uh, on Biswas and Biswas uh, will get punted out the way sadly but good for them, neither of them getting turned around. That is very, very positive, but unfortunate there uh, for uh, Bergio, um, who probably might pick up a penalty for that post-race. We will see, but uh, yeah, this was there. Unfortunately, getting slightly elbowed out at the corner, unfortunately. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah, I mean, we've uh, just one minute 20 left of the race. I think uh, they will just, yeah, they will have one more lap uh, I, I believe, uh, George, uh, so certainly if they're going to fight for position, it has to be now, and uh, certainly it's uh, being displayed out on track at the moment. That's right, Seeley still in the toe of Silver here, Silver doing a great job to remain fast on the track, currently in the last lap, 1 minute 31.155, and Seeley only managing a 131.2, so whatever damage he has picked up has certainly affected him now in the dirty air essentially of Silver's McLaren and that's not going to be helping his cause at all. P7, he'll really really want to get up there in P6. The leaders do go across the line and they're around for another lap here so I believe, if I'm doing my math right here, we will get one more lap after this. Assuming Van San doesn't have an absolutely shocker of a lap here. That's running a little bit wide there. Muller takes it nice and cleanly but Muller has fallen off the back of Van San so at this stage Van San is looking to take 
a race one victory here. 20 seconds on the clock, so they will go across the line uh, to bring out the white flag, which indicates the last lap of this race has begun. Leader is on the final lap, so everyone will go round one more time in this race. By the way, uh, Domokos Kies here in the Audi has been having a great battle in P10, trying to get up into P9 ahead of Giafrida, but Giafrida in that yellow uh, AMG looking very strong. That was an interesting line from Kies there. Trying to open up the corner a little bit too much, but has managed to run wide on the entry and then wide on the exit. That's certainly not ideal. Uh, certainly not, and you have to uh, watch out for... Uh... Uh, cutting track limit pe penalties as well as who's that who's spun that's Woodward Woodward's made a big mistake and uh, yeah oh god he's, he's oh, what a time to uh, lose uh, you know a few positions on the last lap there George yeah he's unfortunately had a few incidents in the last couple of laps there I'm not quite sure why or what happened but um, fortunately for him that has kind of ruined his race here he's dropped all the way down uh, the battle continues between Yankov and Marge as well. Uh, Bergio is now very close to the back of Biswas, so these two will be having at it on the last lap once again. But all eyes at this stage, Van Sand and Muller, because these two have had a good race and a brilliant overtake there from Van Sand. As Sean said, was very, very patient and just sat right behind Muller's Audi uh, for as long as he needed. As soon as there was a mistake on track or a little inkling of a gap, the full send happened and was done very, very cleanly. So down the pit straight to take the victory in race one, it will be Sandro Van Sand in the McLaren. The 93 car comes across the line, takes the checkered flag, followed by Muller, who will continue to hold the fastest lap. And then we've got Firth, who's elevated up into the podium positions. A great finish for Firth, and he's stoked. You can see by the flashing of the lights there. Mark GG comes across in P4, P5 for Gibbons, P6. For Silva, will hold on to it, and unfortunately oh. for Seeley, P7 can't improve. No, indeed, and uh, yeah, that's not good news for Seeley. Of course, he's going to have a second chance, and he's going to hope... Uh, well, he's going to have to uh, go for broke, isn't he, in race two, um, uh, Seeley, unfortunately. Uh, because, yeah, if he doesn't, I think that'll be curtains for the championship, George. It could well be. Of course, we've only got one round left after this, so this is a crucial, crucial race uh, for everyone in the championship. But in particular, uh, Van Sand, Christian Muller, and Seeley. And Seeley having that result there is going to be rather disappointing. But he's got another race to try it, and he'll be starting back up towards the top of the grid. So he'll have another chance to uh, get that lap all sorted out. And we will be going to that race momentarily. We'll set up the grid once again for our short formation lap. Across the line comes the final participants uh, of the race, including Milk Harl, who's dropped to P20. Thompson, P21 there. Both of them serving a drive-through. And Gar uh, Garroil, uh, I'm going to pronounce that name particularly poorly today. Uh, Garroil also, unfortunately, looks like he's spent a bit of time in the pits too, maybe for damage. Uh, Jace, Jake Deschamps, has, he didn't get out of the pits at all, sadly. So spent the entire time sitting in the pit lane, 1,083 seconds spent uh, in the pit. <laughs> so that's uh, that's not the way. It must be a bit of a problem with the car somehow because he wasn't able to get out on track. Um, but Sean, you might have the standings up uh, there. So if you give it a refresh, you might be able to see how things are now looking on the tables. Uh, unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to because I still can't connect to the game. So, <laughs> oh no, the standings are on the website, the simgrid.com website. Uh, we'll oh, okay. Did it updates that quickly? Does it, George? It sometimes does. It sometimes doesn't. And in this case, it hasn't quite done so yet. So, unfortunately for us, that won't be the case. But no. um, in yeah. the in the previous series that I've been on, it does update rather quickly, and it gives us a really really good view of the change in the title there. But Seeley, unfortunately, yeah, as you said, will fall further, sadly, behind uh, Muller. Muller, who's been on 501 points. Seeley, who's on 468 points. Van Sand, even though that was a really, really good race and a victory there, 387 points. So not going to do a lot to bring him out of the top three, but we'll still get a podium position in the standings as it stands right now. And now we're just waiting for the next race to begin. Something may be slightly wrong with the server because we're not moving to the next session at the moment. So we'll have to just wait and see what's going on there. Here we go. The session has finally ended. Thank you, ACC. It does occasionally take a little bit of time. Uh, kudos things, as we like to say, eh, Sean? Indeed, indeed, yes. Uh, well, what I can say to you, George, just working it out in my mathematical brain, is that uh, Muller will now have... 
a 51 point lead at the top of the championship uh so uh, i believe that he gained an extra 18 points uh over so in fact it'll be fi sorry 50 points cool i got it wrong then uh it was 32 Ah, oh, no, no, I've got it wrong. Right, so it was 33 points the gap between Muller and Seeley. He gained 18 points, so it is 51 points. There you go. Copy that. Good stuff. <laughs> All right, so we'll go through our grid once again for our grid walk. Uh, but Sand, of course, uh, back onto the grid, uh, top of the grid here. So uh, started first, went to second for most of the race, won the race, in fact. Now back on pole position, of course. So race two will begin very, very soon. It's the same grid as qualifying order determined from our six minutes of qualifying so same order going through at this stage uh, but um, there's something a little, little weirdness going on with my tools in the background uh, but nonetheless here is your grid once again it was a good little first race uh, lots of action out on track a few unfortunate things happening that contact between Mukhal and Biswa certainly put a little bit of a damper on a few people's races and of course the big news was Sealy. Uh, who decided, to, um, not decided, but unfortunately went for a spin at turn 12 late in the race, just as they were getting to the really exciting part where the overtoping opportunities were really coming into their own. So I do wonder what would have happened as Sand got past Muller. If Seeley was there for that, would he have also managed to find a way through? It's possibly a yes. So we'll see what happens. Any predictions, Sean, for the upcoming race two? Uh, well, I have to say, um, from race one, Van Sand looked uh, very, very competitive and obviously got uh, that uh, uh, race one victory. But, I mean, like I said, CD has to make waves uh, in this championship. If he doesn't uh, in this race, it is curtains for the championship, I believe. It is 51 points separating CD and Muller. So, if, by all costs, he's going to have to finish in front of Muller. So I think I expect Sealy to be right up there, if not even get the race victory. Good, maybe a bold there. statement, but yeah, George. Uh, yeah, take it away, uh, please, George. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll see. Uh, bold predictions here. I mean, as we've always said, we uh, don't make predictions here. We actually make prophecies that turn out to be false. So it's just one of those yeah. things. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, flashing of the lights from all the competitors before they get started. Obviously, all very eager to get on with race two. Down the pit straight, we will go once again for race two in the GT3 nightclub. It's round six here at Valencia for the Formula Racing League. GT3 nightclub will be going green momentarily and Van Sand will take us away at the front of the grid and green, green, green we are. A good start again from Muller. He's going to have the outside line. That Audi is incredibly quick off the line. So that's going to be the outside line in turn one. Once again, we're going to see deja vu. I'm having deja vu from race one, Sean, because Muller has gone around the outside of Van Sand again and up into P1 again. So we're seeing literally quite the repeat there. Oh, but oh. big contact there. Steely into the back of Van Sand actually pushes him into Muller. And that forces Muller a little bit wide on the exit of turn two. And Sand will actually now go up into P1 due to that contact. Uh, first there on the back of Seeley. Muller will take P2. Seeley stays in P3, but as a very fast running uh, Firth in behind. We've had a little bit of a weird issue behind uh, the 55 and 96 cars coming together, I believe, early on this race, or maybe just getting a very bad start. Dobokos Kies has moved up into P10 ahead of Alan Brown, but all eyes still remain on Van Sand and what was a not brilliant start there, the Audi of Christian Muller getting ahead almost immediately, a literal repeat of what we saw in race one, but that contact from Seeley, who tried to look up the inside of turn two, but didn't uh, unfortunately make it work. And that little punt there really helped Van Sand. Van Sand will be uh, looking at his mirrors going, thank you, mate. Thank you for that punt. Uh, it's not going to help my rear diffuser at all, but that certainly helped me in terms of position on track. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, very fortunate for him to uh, to be in the position he's in. Uh, but uh, CD will be praying that uh, there'll be some sort of dogfight between Van Sand and Muller. Maybe, just maybe, there might be a opportunity for CD to overtake both of them. But at the moment, well, it, Van Sand was the fastest man on the track. But uh, Marge, uh, I believe, has got the fastest lap, is he, uh, George? Unless that has changed hands again. It'll change hands again. Yes, it is. It's just, I mean, it'll, it'll sort itself out next lap as they get off their main uh, first 
lap, of course, but uh, Gedman holding that fastest lap at the moment. Keese has uh, continued his charge here. There's a good little battle. Great little battle happening down here in P10 right now. We've also got uh, Silver as well. And oh dear, that's a very yellow car. Yellow flags are out because Bergio has been gone. He's gone round, unfortunately. So the 747 car there not taking off. In fact, he's crash landing uh, sadly into the ground. The battle continues at the top as well. Seeley now under huge pressure from Muller. It's going to have to go defensive into turn eight. Does so nicely. That's where Sand got ahead of Muller in the previous race. Muller looking to repeat that. So we're having deja vu and reverse situations happening all around the grid at the moment. There's another great battle happening here in P5 between Marge and Silver. Uh, no, sorry, that's uh, Jeff Frieda, Silver and Marge. Um, so Marge at the moment up there in that black, red and white McLaren, followed by Silver here and followed by the yellow Mercedes of Gia Frieda. Very nice stuff going on. Keith uh, looking now to get ahead of Woodward, who had a few issues, few troubles last race. That was very wide. Over the bumpy part of the circuit for Keith in that Audi. Uh, but a uh, decent run for all of these uh, drivers. That's very wide, though, from Woodward. Ooh. That's very wide, Sean. Yes, very, very wide, and he's going to be under all sorts of pressure from, uh, I believe that's Keish, isn't it, uh, just drawing up alongside him. He's got the inside line, although it technically is better to be on the outside line because you can actually go a little bit wider. He did actually get pushed by uh, Keish, uh, so Woodward will uh, hold on to that position, but there are three cars behind uh, Keish right now between Brown and uh, Miguel and uh, uh, Yankov, isn't it? Uh, George. It sure is. What a little exciting battle going on there. Keese's bad run through the inside of turn one really triggered that. And Alan Brown was looking very, very keen. Khan in the 909 car picks up a drive through in the first four minutes of this lap. That's nearly unbelievable to have done that already. But this little battle is just looking beautiful. There's six cars in this. And as you said, they were three wide. Keese looking on the inside now to turn eight of Woodward. Can he make it done? No, the door is solidly shut there. Alan Brown running very wide. Biswas will come through on the inside for turn 9, 10, and 11. Will he be able to make something happen on the outside of turn 11? I'm not quite sure. It's a very tricky place to do it because you run very, very wide. And that actually, a car of Mukhal going up the inside of two of them. He's got two for one as it stands right now. Has he gone round? No, he's managed to hold it. Gets ahead of Biswas, doesn't get ahead of Brown at this stage of the race. Oh. Wow, what a little great sequence of action there between these guys. Yes, indeed, and uh, Magao as well uh, went over the sausage there, which unstabled the car there and uh, lost a bit of traction, and uh, he'll be under pressure from uh, Biswas as well. But, uh, yeah, it seems like uh, Woodward has got away with that uh, mistake from uh, the previous lap there. So uh, he's currently in P8, but he has got a fast uh, flowing quiche behind him uh, who uh, will be uh, avenging uh, uh, not not you know making the pass earlier so uh, we'll have to see what happens and there are of course uh, three or four of very thirsty drivers behind of course George correct wow this is a brilliant battle we will continue to keep an eye on that just a note here Giafrida on the back of Marge and getting very very close the gap up the top between Sand and Muller now for one second the gap between Muller and Seeley at 0.7 of a second so those three inseparable once again and that was nearly a move there from Seeley on Muller went very very deep into the corner but managed to keep it out of the back of the Audi driver ahead has dropped them down unfortunately compromised through turn 9 10 and now 11 we'll have a little bit of work to do to get back into that fight but Keith now staying very close excuse me get staying very close to Woodward oh nearly into the back of him that's actually going to open up oh dear okay oh. we've got Yankov into the back of Keys. Alan Brown gets collected in that as well and uh, that was a bit wide from Keys. unfortunately for him Yankov didn't quite see it happen at Pirelli Banner stuck in the rear diffuser of Domokos Kiss's car that let Mukal go as well as Biswas so those two will be elevated up into P9 and P10 respectively uh, that's a disaster for Kiss, who is running very, very nicely uh, in the Audi car. And wow, uh, Yankov, unfortunately, causing that collision. But as a result, unfortunately, of um, Kiss running very, very wide, he will now have a little look up the side of Alan Brown. Can he make something happen into turn one? Looks like he might be able to. Chris Jones now getting ahead up into P13 with Mark GG Gibbons in and Gibbons in tow. Oh. Both of them running very, very wide on the exit there. Um, they don't want to get too many... Uh, oh, up the inside, is it? Of uh, Is it Gibbons? Or, uh, sorry. Uh, That's right, that I is Gibbons. See. 
That is Gibbons, yeah. G Gibbons on uh, Mark GG then. Uh, oh, he oh, goes Gibbons. a little bit wide though. Yeah, it goes very he deep. Oh. oh. And Mark GG is, uh, well, it was literally stuck to the side of uh, Gibbons as they went through the corner there. I think Gibbons is just about holding off uh, Mark GG, but uh, he's going to be under all types of pressure. And there's uh, a sequence of four cars just behind as well if they uh, keep battling away. So, uh, uh, yeah, there, there's certainly going to be uh, big exchanges of uh, positions as we see another two cars side by side in the Shong and Stewart, I believe. Oh, oh. And, oh, it's contact. And That's Yankov that... again at the same corner that he hit Muller. He's done it again. Tried up the inside of turn 11. It just doesn't work there, as you can tell. Uh, but he's tried it again, and it's not worked. Indeed, and all that he's doing is slowing him down and, uh, uh, you know, a bit of damage on the car as well, which is uh, certainly going to make the car uh, pretty tricky to drive. Uh, certainly uh, been a, a circuit full of uh, technical corners, um, so really needs to learn from his uh, mistakes or that will be race over. Correct. Uh, by the way, just an update, Marge and Giafrida battle still continuing for these two. They're actually separated only by a couple of tenths of a second. Uh, but nothing really changing there. And that's Thompson. Thompson's going around at turn one. Something major has happened there for the 55 car. We'll see if we can pull that up on a replay later on. But that, unfortunately for him, will be putting him down in P20. So last time out, he got to drive through. This time out, he's been spun around and ended up in P20 both times, sadly for him. This battle continues here down the back of the grid. Alan Brown now under pressure from Stewart. Deshaun is in tow as well with Yankov behind him in P17, P18. Quick update on the leaders' battle, P1, P2, P3. 1.5 seconds is the gap from Sand to Muller, and Muller to Sealy is now 1.3 seconds. Brown, that's a beautiful move up the inside. Oh. Can he hold it? Oh, Looks like he just can. about, I think. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> He's done very, very well there, but around the outside now, he has to go in turn 11. No, he can't make that work because it's a very tricky part of the circuit to overcome. Yankov is going to be going side by side. Hold on, that's going to be very tricky. Be very careful, guys. Side by side in turn 12, not the place you want to do it. And that's uh, Brown. Oh, sorry, that's uh, Deshong there now getting involved in the action, coming in like an absolute torpedo, manages to get on the brakes and slow down. Uh, those two going side by side. So Yankov does get ahead of Brown there. Marge now is being under attack from Giafrida uh, into turn two. That's around the outside as a defensive move from. Uh, from Giafrida, but can't hold it. So Marge will continue to stay ahead in this battle. This is all kicking off here, Sean. <laughs> it certainly is. Just don't know where to look, do we, George, at the moment? Um, literally, uh, uh, probably, what, three or four different battles with uh, many cars involved, and uh, uh, I, I almost fear for their lives, uh, George, because uh, they, they, they're getting so close to each other. Uh, but, of course, this is the beauty of the sprint races, of course. 20 minutes, not a lot of time to, uh, to make moves and uh, finish in a good position. So uh, we are certainly seeing that in uh, race two here at uh, Valencia tonight, Lou, uh, George. That's right. Big news here. Keith has picked up a drive through penalty. So P11, he will have to pit in the next few laps. Unfortunately, Ellen Brown also, for some reason, coming into the pits, might be retiring the car. The 98 car also has been sitting in the pits once again uh, the entire race. So he's obviously had a bit of a permanent issue with the car and is not going to be racing today. Very sad. But Looking back up the top of the grid, uh, and also into chat as well, these three still inseparable on track. Uh, the gaps are starting to eke out, though. So CB at this point, I think, is just saying, look, we're going we're to get P3. Let's, let's get the points and let's continue on to next round. Uh, they're all setting very low 130s. By the way, Sealy has set the fastest lap now, a 130.205. That's faster than our qualifying times. And 0.3 of a second outside of a 1 minute 29. So that is proper quality pace there a 130.3 and a 130.4 from sand and muller respectively on the grid and is that someone who's just had another issue there there's kiss going into the pits to serve that drive through gibbons still on the back of chris jones welcome into chat Hazza, welcome in lovely to have you in here lovely to have everyone in chat if you're enjoying of course uh, do let us know in chat if you're enjoying if you've got any questions do let us know big thanks to uh, everyone in chat and watching today big thanks to the frl organizers you are of course watching formula racing leagues gt3 nightclub two 20 minute races were eight sorry we're 12 minutes through race two here today so uh, 
uh, the proceedings will be coming to a close in about eight minutes here on track. Uh, the track continues to cool. Eight minutes to go in this race, and it's been a brilliant one so far. It really has been. Uh, yeah, absolutely uh, fantastic. We've seen it all, haven't we? Some really close battles. Seeley, you know, um, really pushing f uh, for his life now because he knows uh, that this is the all-important race uh, going into the, the last round, of course. So we're uh, really going to try and apply that pressure to Muller now. Muller will know that Seeley is the fastest man on a circuit right now. So, uh, so Seeley will be uh, looking to uh, close on in and uh, push Muller as much as possible and we'll see if there's any mistakes but Muller is normally cool calm and collected uh, so it's no easy feat for Seeley to uh, to you know uh, force a mistake from uh, Muller or even make a move on him uh, but with uh, seven minutes left of a race two I suppose we're going to find out aren't we George? We certainly are, and we're looking forward to seeing what happens in the last seven minutes of this race because these two are getting closer and closer. We've got an onboard shot now with Seeley, who is our fastest lap holder at the moment. We're going to keep an eye on those inputs into the steering wheel as he does follow around the rear end of that Audi in Christian Muller. So Van Sand here having a very, very good day out. I currently believe that uh, Van Sand is in P3 in the championship, a little bit off the back of these two who are fighting it out for the lead of the championship standings. And as it, as it is right now, Seeley will continue to fall further behind uh, Muller. That was very, very deep there, uh, very late on the brakes and an odd line there from Seeley. So that's compromised him a little bit out of the straight, not just a little bit, quite a lot, because look at Muller disappearing off into the distance at the moment. So a little bit unfortunate there for Seeley, maybe just missed his braking zone. You know, that curb on the outside of turn 14, uh, if you get your tire over the back of it, Sometimes it's a little bit hard to get the car to just flip back into the circuit and get the angle you need. It's a very tricky angle at turn 14, of course, known as Campos, uh, named after the world-famous Adrian Campos, which uh, Sean told us about earlier in the race. If you want all that race information, of course, you can go back and watch the broadcast uh, from the beginning of the stream, which will be available here on the FRL channel as a VOD momentarily uh, for about a week or so after the race, but it'll also be uploaded to YouTube, so check us out. Uh, the Formula Racing League on YouTube as well because there's all of our back catalogued races get uploaded there after the events so it's always good to go and watch and of course if you want to give us a bit of a support as well you're more than welcome to give us a follow here on the Twitch channel of course it is free and you get notifications about when we go live and uh, you can always change your minds afterwards can't you Sean? Uh, you can indeed but uh, but uh, you know I'm sure you won't be doing that though of course no, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, certainly uh, the racing has been as phenomenal as it has done all season, George, I have to say. Um, you know, Valencia um, ha has not uh, disappointed us in terms of, uh, uh, you know, great passes, in terms of uh, a bit of drama, which, uh, you know, is always uh, a thing in uh, GT3 nightclub. But, uh, you know, we are watching some of the finest drivers on a set of course of Competizione uh, and uh, this is really exciting stuff it does look like Seedy has closed on in on Muller again so Seedy definitely oh is he looking to go up the inside or oh, he, he stuck a nose there didn't he George but uh, uh, for now Muller has closed the door on him but uh, it, you know if Seedy's going to make a move it's got to be in the next couple of laps here so we'll see if he can uh, make the move on him but currently at the moment uh, I think it's about two to three tenths between them. Uh, so we'll see if uh, if Muller does come under uh, serious pressure and uh, Seeley to make a move on him. That's right. And deep into turn eight, Seeley goes once again. He's very, very good on the brakes in that Lamborghini there. Not as good as Muller. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, better than Muller is into turn eight. Muller's maybe just a little bit more conservative. On the entry through into turn eight, just trying to optimize the exit try and hook up the S's here in turn 9, 10 and 11 which do benefit from a good exit out of turn 8 which is a tricky corner because it's cambered away from the racing apex 
and it's also downhill so the car does not want to slow down so it is worth being a little bit conservative into that but Sealy at the moment says right I know you're slow through there I know I can be fast through there so let's maximize that and again down the straight again uh, in the previous lap it was very very close now there's about 0.5 of a second now so not quite as close this time down the back straight and by the way just behind this battle Firth and Silver going at it as well as Marge and Giafrida who've been inseparable in race two three minutes to go in this race and the battles all around the grid are starting to spread out in some cases in other cases starting to heat up like here with p2 and p3 which we will stay on board with because this is a significant significant last two minutes and 50 seconds for Sealy in this race whether he steals the p3 or will take a p2 away from christian muller which is obviously what he wants to do and just by the way we've got side by side now oh. between giafrida and marge Indeed, and Giafrida just holding it around the outside there. Marge uh, putting uh, also, in fact, that was a pass, wasn't it, Joel? It was Sorry. indeed. Uh, Giafrida around the outside. Uh, that is very difficult to do, but Giafrida did make it work and he is up into P6 with uh, Marge in P7. And then, of course, we've got that very racy Magal, uh, who is, is like a wasp. He just does not leave you alone as we've got another pass as well between was it Biswas and Woodward is it it was indeed oh Seely huge news from the grid Seely has got oh. a drive through penalty oh well that has gone from bad to worse a disastrous race one has turned into a disastrous race two oh. he'll have to be in the pits Marge has had to spin as well oh dear that's Jeff Frieda Jeff Frieda has gone oh. round and uh Jeff Frieda's off track he can't do anything he's sitting nearly on the racing line has to get going as soon as possible. Wow. Uh, oh, in the space of a few seconds, everything is yeah. absolutely kicked off from around the grid. Marge as well off on the track may be responsible for that contact between the two cars. In fact, we've got a replay of this happening right now. Here's Marge with Mukal behind. So Mukal not involved in that at this stage. They're going through turn seven. And that's all Giafrida gets a little bit squiggly on the exit there. See what happens here because Giafrida is going to get tapped on the back by Marge oh. that's why we saw Marge yeah. going very slowly looking to redress the position but this is the big news here at the moment uh, once the replay does end which it does uh, Sealy has gone for his drive through he's come back out now behind Mukhal so he will be in P6 overall and that is going to be a very very important moment uh, for him in this championship because his championship fight for P1 is more than likely over at the stage barring a DNF, a double DNF for Muller in round seven. Huge implications for the championship there. And he will make this move now on Mukhal and take that position back. And oh dear, he's done not, not done it particularly cleanly, Sean Ezzi. No, he hasn't indeed. I mean, uh, certainly Sealy will, will be uh, looking very desperate. I was just kind of looking the, uh, at the uh, points difference there. Uh, if uh, Sealy remains in P5, then it'll be 12 points uh, that uh, Muller has gained on him. And then that will be a 63-point lead going into uh, the last round, of course. All right, so here, interestingly, Firth. So because of that drive-through, Firth was elevated up into P3, but now being overtaken by Silver, who's got him on the back straight and continues to hold the position into turn one. A beautiful move there for Silver, who will move up into the podium positions. Great stuff from him. Will Firth be able to do anything in the background? Leon Seely and uh, <laughs> Mukhal are going at it. Into turn one, they go almost side by side. Mukhal backs out of it. <coughs> Excuse me, goes for the inside line there on Sealy. Sealy will try and close the door, but it's outbraked by Mukhal. Oh. A bit of contact between the two. It's a little bit messy there from Mukhal, but both these drivers very keen to get their result better here. Sealy frustrated, of course, with himself for the drive through penalty that he's just received using too much of the track limits. And Mukhal, we know how our elbows out that driver is. Sealy will get ahead. Uh, in turn five and will maintain that position as uh, Cecilia moves up into P set, uh, P5. Uh, but all eyes now back to Sandro Van Sam because the race is about to finish here under the lights at night here in the GT3 nightclub. Uh, powered by ACC Strategist. Round six, Valencia will go to uh, Sandro Van Sam. What a drive uh, for both races, a P1 in both races. Christian Muller will take P2 in this race. And as it stands now, 
Silver will take P3. Congratulations to Silver. That is a fantastic drive, taking advantage at the end and getting ahead of third. It will take P4. Seeley, coming through the last couple of corners as well, has secured that P5. Will continue to hold the fastest lap, but that is a night that has gone from a good situation, potential situation, lots of opportunity in the situation, to unfortunately a total disaster for Seeley once again. So that's unfortunate, really, really is. Yeah, yeah, no, I second that, uh, George. Um, of course, the nerves can get to you. He, he would have known how important this round was in, uh, you know, taking the championship to the last round. Uh, unfortunately, it's just one of them things that happens. Um, but, uh, of course, congratulations to Van Sand. Uh, we didn't see that, did we? Oh, Not only, uh, uh, just to interrupt you, Sean, we've got a very slow-moving Mark GG who's going about three kilometers an hour on track and was on the racing line. And some cars and Khan, Gedman and Brown have just come past and nearly had a huge contact. I think he's out of fuel. Somehow he's out of fuel. He hasn't put enough fuel in the car to reach the end of the race because he's going at three kilometers an hour down the back straight. That's, uh, yeah, it's unfortunately a bit mis miscalculation there for Mark GG and nearly had contact with Khan and Gedman who did go through. Uh, get uh, Khan nearly went right into the back of him, which would have been very unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, that will round out our race. So... Uh, Woodward in P8, uh, Gibbons in P9. Chris Jones will take the P10 slot. So your top 10 uh, will be Sandra Van Sand in P1, Muller in P2, Silva in P3, Firth in P4, Seely in P5, Mukal in P6, P7 to Biswas, P8 to Woodward, P9 to Gibbons, and Chris Jones in P10, as we mentioned before. Yeah, my apologies there because uh, because I haven't got my own screen there. I generally thought they they had finished the race because he was going that slow, so I wasn't even like concentrating on the fact that actually he uh, just ran out of fuel. <laughs> yeah, no, all good. It's um, it not you're not expecting to see a car go three kilometers an hour down the straight right at the end of the, the, the race, and I think he's 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 I think he has made it back to the pits. Okay, so he has made it back to the pits. That's very, very good. That's good to see. Uh, but yeah, everyone has finished the race. That is the session today. Uh, was M saying P6 from P24 ain't bad. Certainly isn't at all. Rocky Marge in chat said, well, ruined my best position ever on FRL. Yes, that was super unfortunate, Marge. But it was a good overall drive, and it is certainly something to remain proud of. You can always work on these things, and, uh, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. But a good drive from everyone on the grid. Some very, very entertaining races. Marge yourself involved in some brilliant battles there with Giafrida. Just super unfortunate with that contact there. Good on you, though, for attempting the redress on the position. You saw that it was your fault. You backed out of it, and you let Giafrida get back ahead. So uh, hats off to you, because that is sportsmanship. Uh, the racecraft, of course, uh, will be something you can always work on. But nonetheless, no criticism there from us in the commentary box, because, Sean, you and me, you know, we'd suffer from the exact same thing on track, especially at night, at a track like this, wouldn't we? Oh, certainly. I mean, the... the um the visibility for the drivers uh, is is not really good, is it? Of, of course, uh, ideally, we'd want it to be, uh, uh, you know, daytime. Uh, and, and certainly, I I don't have the, the skill level of these drivers to uh, to you know keep it on the track, let alone uh, uh, make moves cleanly and uh, you know without any uh, some some kind of contact. So uh, so no fair play to uh, all the drivers out on circuit today. Yes, accidents do happen, and and that is of course why we've. Uh, We've got stewards in the background to uh, decide uh, any uh, appropriate actions and stuff. But uh, yes, certainly fantastic race again here in the uh, GT3 nightclub. And uh, yeah, one round to go after this one, George. Correct. Yeah, it's always really good fun here in GT3 nightclub. A brilliant place to cut your teeth, to improve your race craft. Because if you're driving at night amongst a real mix of skill levels and talent and uh, setups and things like that, it really is a good place to hone your racecraft and get yourself a little bit of experience out on track. But uh, Wazim, as well, uh, Wazim as well saying, big, elbow, big elbows. Yes, there were quite a lot of big elbows out there, unfortunately, today. But sometimes you've got to do that. A track like Valencia is certainly one that it, it almost encourages that sort of driving. The biggest opportunities for overtaking being turn one, turn two. So big sends into both and a compromising line if you're going side by side in either of those corners brings people back into the action who are behind you and compromises you on the exit. So it's a very, very tricky circuit. Of course, it is uh, here set up for MotoGP primarily, but that's why I love it for GT3. It's absolutely 
Brilliant. Uh, Hypnotize saying, quit the stream, I want to rewatch. <laughs> you will have a moment to do that in just a second. We will be not spending too much longer here talking about the remainder of the race because it was a brilliant round six here at Valencia uh, today. Sean, final word before, uh, before we go to the final part of the stream. Well, uh, as, as I alluded to before, it was an absolute fantastic race. And uh, uh, my driver of the day, and I think you will agree with me, George uh, Van Sand, with the back-to-back uh, -back wins uh, here at uh, Valencia, uh, you know, really didn't put a wheel wrong. And even when he, uh, you could say it was a little bit of a dodgy overtake, but it wasn't actually his fault, was it, uh, in race two. Um, I think he uh, f thoroughly deserved the back-to-back uh, -back wins. And it's just a shame, you know, that uh, had he have had uh, better results, uh, th you know, consistent consistently throughout the season, maybe he'll be joined in the fight uh, for the championship. But uh, it wasn't to be, but uh, it's definitely uh, Van Sands' night, I believe, George. That's very true, and I would agree with you on the driver of the day. Do let us know in chat who your driver of the day is. Uh, Rocky Marge has just said in chat, thanks, mate. Awesome commentating as usual. Really appreciate the comment there. Really appreciate that. Hypnotizement saying, great job by Sandro from number 30 Audi. Couldn't agree more. Um, but yes, uh, oh, and subscribe with Prime. Yeah. Hypnotize, thank you very much for the subscription with Prime. Thank that you. is very much appreciated. So we will start rounding things out in the GT3 nightclub today. So uh, those like Hypnotize can go back and watch the stream, which he's obviously very, very keen to do. A uh, big thank you, of course, to the Formula Racing League organizers, to them for the uh, prizes on offer. Thank you to all the drivers for putting on such a good show here at Valencia. We are extremely excited to see what's going to happen at the next round at Ruhrberg Ring, which is the final round of this series on September 22nd. Make sure you join us here for all the live action on the Formula Racing League TV Twitch channel. Sean Madden, a big thanks to you as well on behalf of us in the commentary box. It's been an absolute pleasure. My name is George Cook. We've got Sean Madden as well on behalf of 00 Raven Comms. That is going to be our broadcast tonight. So once again, a big thank you to everyone. Good evening, good night, and goodbye.